Hey, what is up guys? This is FNH here and welcome back to another programming algorithm tutorial. Okay, so you guys probably noticed the last time I did an anagram algorithm and I used a fairly simple way to do it where, you know, you can just sort the um, anagram and then compare the two sorted uh, words. Okay, and you know, that's not always acceptable on interviews. Okay, uh, sometimes it is. And uh, sometimes it's not. So I'm going to show you another way, a more, I guess, manual way um, to go about that check. Okay, so I have the anagram. Um, well, I have the me method uh, in the main, right? So now I, let me just rename to word and anagram. Okay, so now first thing we want to check is basically if the two words in the parameters, the word and the anagram that we're checking, we want to check if their length are equal. Okay, so if their length are not equal, we basically just want to return false. Because, you know, in that case, we know that they um, cannot be out anagrams. Okay, so now, um, what do we want to do? We want to basically iterate through the word. Okay, <clears throat> so char in word. Okay, um, you know, in C sharp, you can basically iterate <clears throat> through a string um, as if it was an array or something. Um, you know, in other language, you might have to convert the string into a character array and then iterate through that. Okay, so, um, you know, C Charles lets me do this, so I'm going to just go with it. Okay, so next we want to have the index, anagram, um, index of, and then CH. Okay, so what are we doing here? All right, so we're going to each character of the word, okay, um, which in this case is Iceman, and we want, we're basically searching the anagram word and getting the index of that character, okay? So, um, you know, either that character exists or it doesn't exist. Index, if index does not equal negative one, we're gonna do something, um, else return T-U-R-N, return false. Okay, so in this case, what we're doing here is if the index does not equal negative one, uh, we're gonna do some logic, otherwise we're gonna return false, meaning um, it will be equal to minus one, and if index is minus one, it basically means that that character is not found in the anagram word, and in that case, it cannot be an anagram. All right, so now what do we want to do here is, I guess, the big question. All right, so we want to take, we want to basically assign anagram to something, okay? Anagram dot substring zero to index plus anagram dot substring index plus one. Okay, um, so what are we doing here? We're taking the word anagram, right? Um, and we're, it, this is basically removing the word character, the character um, that it found. And in this case, um, let's, if we're iterating through it one by one, it's basically checking the eye right so we're first checking if i is inside the word cinema right inside the anagram word um, and it's true so the index is not equal to minus one right and the first part of the substring we're basically getting the anagram word and we're getting from zero to up to where the index is uh, basically where the i is okay so the substring parameters are the start index and the length. Okay, so we start index is zero and the length would be one. Okay, 
So we just get the C. So this part will print out the C. Okay. And the second part of the substring is basically printing out index plus one. So the index we know is I. It's over here. And we want to print out the rest of it. Okay. So after the first pass, the word is C N E M A. Okay. So the way this algorithm is working is basically we're removing every character that we found. Okay. And then at the end, we R E T O R N return. We want to basically check if the word anagram is null or empty. Okay. So if it is null or empty, we return true, meaning that all of the words, all of the characters in the first word were found in the second word with nothing left over. Okay. So if there are some stuff left over, uh, this will return false. All right. So that's basically uh, the gist of it. You know, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, you know, you guys might want to optimize this by using a string builder in, uh, I believe C sharp you use string builder and I believe Java has string buffer, right? So you want to um, you might want to use that mainly because you know strings are immutable. Every time you make a change, it generates a new string. Okay, so yeah, that's just I guess an optimization technique that you guys could do with this, right? Um, so yeah, let's first test it out. Let me run it and you can see that it is true. All right, so let's replace this with a S. And you can see now it is false. All right, so you can see it works uh, perfectly fine. It's, it's pretty simple also, uh, even though compared to the other one, which you know was a bit simpler, uh, mainly because they used a lot of the built-in functionality um, that comes with C Sharp or Java. Know, using sort and just comparing the two lists or two arrays. So yeah, um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Um, I'd love to help you guys out. If you liked the video and it helped you, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time.